at five o'clock in the afternoon. All the kids from the Brearley School were picked up by their parents, one by one. Soon, Wendy was the only one left waiting in the classroom. She sat at her desk with a Barbie doll in hand. From time to time, she would glance out the window. Even though she looked over time and again, nobody came. Half an hour passed, and the teacher had already started preparing to leave. But Emma had not come yet. Wendy's face was lowered, and she kept staring at the Barbie doll in her hand. The teacher walked over and asked Wendy, Wendy, your mommy hasn't arrived yet? I know. Wendy wrinkled her pink face in disappointment. The teacher patted her hair and then said, Let's try giving her a call then. Does that sound good? Hearing the teacher's suggestions, Wendy looked up in surprise. Yes, please. Okay then. The teacher smiled and took out his phone to call Emma. But even after calling a few times, her phone kept going straight to voicemail. The teacher hung up the phone and said to her, Wendy, no one is picking up. Do you know your daddy's phone number? Um, my godfather left the country. Mommy might still be at work, Wendy thought hard. Is there anyone else you know to call in an emergency? Wendy looked up and looked at her teacher with tears in her eyes. Teacher, can I borrow your phone? Sure. As the teacher spoke, he handed the phone to Wendy. Wendy pressed in a number and waited for the other side to answer the phone. In SG Enterprises' advanced meeting room, Aiden sat in the director's seat with a gloomy but handsome face. He didn't say a word. The people below him didn't even dare to breathe too loudly. They were afraid that they would offend him if they weren't careful. Let's discuss the project in the city center. Before Chris could finish his sentence, Aiden's phone suddenly rang. In the quiet conference room, the phone was abrupt. Aiden frowned. He took out his phone and answered the call. Hello, this is Aiden Grant. Uncle Aiden. Wendy's whine came from the other end of the phone. Wendy, why are you crying? Aiden's voice was raised to warmth in an instant. He was so distracted that he almost stood up from his wheelchair. Uncle Aiden, all the other kids left. But Mommy hasn't come to kindergarten to pick me up yet. Wendy cried. Where's your godfather? Can't he pick you up? Aiden waved at Chris. The latter immediately stopped the meeting and pushed Aiden away. It was an important meeting, but because of Wendy's phone call, the meeting was instantly suspended. It had to be said that in Aiden's eyes, Wendy was quite important. Godfather went away for work. Wendy cried very sadly. Wendy, don't cry. Uncle Aiden is coming to get you. Where are you? Aiden's heart ached when he heard Wendy cry. Wendy is at Brearley School. I'm in kindergarten. Uncle is on his way. Okay. Half an hour later, Chris's car pulled to a stop in front of the Brearley School. Aiden waited in the car, and Chris ran into the kindergarten to pick up Wendy. When Wendy was carried into the car by Chris, tears still hung on her face. Uncle Aiden! Aiden held a handkerchief to wipe her face. Wendy cried a lot today. Wendy retorted, no! Yes, yes, Aiden soothed her. Uncle will take you to mommy, okay? Thank you, Uncle Aiden. Wendy kissed Aiden's cheek suddenly. Aiden pinched her cheek and said to Chris, bring us to the hospital. Chris wanted to tell Mr. Grant that the people in the conference room were still waiting. But in the end, he did not correct his boss. The meeting will need to be rescheduled for tomorrow, Aiden said suddenly. Yes, sir, Chris nodded and immediately called the office. Emma had not expected this surgery to be so problematic. The patient had a sudden abnormality during the procedure. It added a whole new level of difficulty to an already challenging procedure. Not long after the patient was stitched up, another complication emerged. The patient needed to be returned to surgery immediately. After an hour of emergency rescue, the patient was resuscitated and now rested in the ICU. She came out of the operating theater exhausted. By the time she returned to the office, 
It was already half past six. Only then did she remember that she still had to go to kindergarten to pick up Wendy. She started to pack her bag in a panic. At that moment, there was a knock on the door. Emma lowered her head and focused on packing up her things. Jane, I will write up a report tomorrow. I need to go pick up Wendy. Before she could finish speaking, Wendy's voice sounded from outside. Mommy? Emma thought that she was hallucinating. Wendy was still in kindergarten. How could she appear here? No, it it was clearly Wendy calling her. Emma looked up and saw Aiden holding Wendy at the door of the office. Wendy! Emma's surprised eyes suddenly turned sharp, and she looked straight at Aiden. How did you know where Wendy's kindergarten was? Did you have us investigate it? Aiden's eyes darkened when he heard Emma's accusation. Was he such a villain in her heart? Seeing that Aiden did not respond, Emma decided he was subtly admitting it. Anger accumulated in Emma's heart. She rushed over to Aiden and snatched Wendy back from his arms. She looked at him defensively. At this moment, Wendy spoke. Mommy, you forgot to come and get Wendy. That's why Wendy called Uncle Aiden. Wendy's reply made Emma's anger freeze on her face. Why was she always so quick to overthink things? It was so simple. She looked at Aiden. The latter's eyes were indifferent, as if he did not hear her previous question. After a long while, Aiden said, I still have work to do. I'll be leaving now. Wendy immediately struggled out of Emma's arms when she heard that Aiden was leaving. She hugged Aiden's thigh and said, Uncle Aiden, can't you stay and play with Wendy? Be good, little one. Uncle still has some business to attend to. Aiden touched Wendy's face. Uncle also wanted to stay with Wendy, but he knew her mother wouldn't like it much. Okay. Goodbye, Uncle Aiden. Wendy obediently let go of his hand. Goodbye. Emma's heart was mixed as she watched Chris push Aiden away. She knew that she had made a snap judgment and lashed out at him when all he'd done was help. Although he did not say anything, Emma knew that he was angry. If not, he would not have left in such a hurry. Little one, why didn't you call Mommy? Why did you call Uncle Aiden? Emma lowered her head and asked Wendy. The teacher tried to call Mommy. No one answered Mommy's phone. Wendy borrowed the teacher's phone to call Uncle Aiden. Emma's face turned pale when she heard Wendy's words. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. I actually forgot to pick up Wendy. Emma apologized to Wendy. It's all right. I know that Mommy is busy. Wendy replied with a smile. Sighing, Emma picked Wendy up and left the office. By noon, the office was deserted. Emma stared at the phone on her desk, wondering whether or not to call Aiden and apologize for yesterday's misunderstanding. Emma picked up the phone, found Aiden's number, and dialed. In the end, she hung up and threw the phone on the desk. She held her face and was conflicted. There was a knock at the door. Emma calmed herself down and looked up. She saw someone who surprised her. Peter. Of course, Emma did not think Peter was here to see a doctor. She specialized in neurosurgeries. Was there something wrong with his brain? Peter smiled at Emma and walked in. Emma's office is not bad. What can I do for you, Peter? Emma asked. Emma crossed her arms and looked at Peter coldly. The smile on Peter's face did not change. He sat down opposite Emma. Is this how Dr. Turner treats all her old friends? Emma glared at the man opposite her. Even though it was Aiden who despised Peter, she still could not forgive Peter for everything he'd done to her. In the end, he'd cheated on her with her best friend. He'd then made Alicia his girlfriend. The way he treated Alicia in the end disappointed her as well. I don't think we could be considered friends. Emma spat the last word with animosity. Peter's face stiffened, but quickly recovered. All right, not old friends. I came to talk to you about Aiden. 
If you want to know more, come to this place after work to speak with me. After saying that, Peter took out a piece of paper and placed it on Emma's desk. Then he got up and left. After Peter left, Emma did not even look at the piece of paper. She just gathered her things and left the office. When Emma returned to her office the next time, it was already time to get off to work. Emma took off her white coat and hung it on the hanger. She then took out her bag from the cabinet and prepared to leave to pick up Wendy. She glanced at the note Peter left on the desk. After hesitating for a few seconds, she finally picked up the piece of paper. On it was written the coffee shop opposite her hospital. After his fight with Emma the night before, Aiden had been working overtime in his office for the entire day. Today, he had personally gone to inspect the land in the city center. On the way back to the company, he leaned against the back seat listlessly and stared blankly out the window. The car drove for a half hour. When it passed by the hospital, Aiden suddenly said, Stop the car. Chris was stunned. He turned the steering wheel and pulled into the drop-off bay. Aiden looked at the person running towards the cafe across the road in a daze. Why wasn't she picking up Wendy from school? Why was she going into the coffee shop? She hated coffee. Ding, ding. The chime above the door clinked. There was a long line of cars in the area. Mr. Grant? Mr. Grant? Chris called out to Aiden. Aiden did not look at him. He pushed the door open and got out of the car. Mr. Grant, where are you going? Chris asked in a hurry. You can head back first. Aiden slammed the car door and walked to the other side of the road. Chris stared at Aiden as he crossed the road and walked towards the cafe. He was a little uneasy as he started the car. He turned the steering wheel and then followed Aiden. Aiden went straight to the cafe. He did not walk in. Instead, he quietly studied the people in the cafe, as if reviewing a painting. Emma had gone into the cafe before him, and after she found Peter, she sat down opposite him. Peter smiled. I thought you wouldn't come. I'm listening. Emma's voice was faint. She admitted that she was really curious about Aiden, so she fell right into Peter's trap. I have some information about why Aiden married you. Peter took out a leather bag and handed it to Emma. After so many years... Peter had matured a lot. He wanted to get Emma back, but he would not be as reckless as before. Today, he had just wanted to meet with her. Moreover, he believed that Emma would forgive him after she saw this information. He did not know that Emma had read this information five years before, so he was destined for disappointment. When the past was again laid out before her, Emma's face went pale. Emma, I know that everything that happened with Alicia was because I let you down. But I know now that I was wrong. Can't you forgive me? Peter stood up and took Emma's hand. Emma looked at the leather bag in her hand absentmindedly and did not shake him off. Aiden could not help but hurry towards Emma when he saw her. However, he did not expect to find her with Peter. He could not hear what they were talking about. When he saw Peter take Emma's hand, Aiden's heart felt as if it had been stabbed. Emma reacted after a few minutes. She reached out and pulled Peter's hand away. Coldly, she said, Thank you for bringing this to me. I still have to leave first. Peter reached out and grabbed Emma's wrist. Emma, for the past five years, my feelings have never changed. I love you. Emma lowered her head and looked at Peter's hand on her wrist. She said sternly, Mr. Grant, just like back then, I have lost all interest in you. What about Aiden? Peter asked angrily. Emma felt a pain in her heart. Mr. Grant, she said, that's my business. It has nothing to do with you. Now let go of me. Hearing Emma's words, Peter understood. No matter what, There was only one person in Emma's heart. He let go of Emma's hand in disappointment. Suddenly, he noticed a familiar car by the road. Wasn't that Aiden's car? 
In other words, he had been here. A glint flashed in Peter's eyes. He lowered his head and said sadly, Emma, could you at least spare one final goodbye hug? For old time's sake, I will never again step into your life. Emma, who had been about to leave, stopped when she heard Peter's words. She slowly turned her head to look at Peter. This was the man she had once loved. In the end, she turned around and hugged him briskly. With his head facing away from Emma, Peter's eyes flashed with a victorious smile. No matter what Aiden and Emma would do in the future, Aiden would definitely have a knot in his heart when he remembered seeing this scene. Aiden, consider this payback. Indeed, Peter and Emma's hug was like a knife that ruthlessly stabbed into Aiden's heart. It made his face turn as white as paper. Seeing Emma walk out of the coffee shop, Aiden reacted very quickly and hid behind the billboard at the side. He watched Emma leave the coffee shop and then head back to her car. Aiden staggered and could not hold on any longer. He fell down. Chris, who parked the car by the side of the road, saw Aiden collapse. He hurriedly ran out of the car. Mr. Grant! After Emma got into the car, she could no longer hold back her tears. Peter's reminder made her reaffirm that it was impossible for her and Aiden. It was impossible back then, and it is even more impossible now. Being in the same city had given Wendy an opportunity to get to know him. This was already amazing. She could not continue to ask more of him. Having him back in her life made her want to be greedy. Emma did not call Aiden as she left. She planned to let this relationship go. But the next day, she met Chris in the hospital. Emma had just finished lunch in the hospital's cafeteria and was about to return to her office when she ran into Chris as he got out of the elevator. Chris was on the phone and did not notice her. Mr. Grant is not well. You can just reply to the client and ask him to reschedule for another day. As for the meeting, it will have to be postponed. The property in the city center needs to be finished. Don't you know how important that project is? What do I need you for anyway? You can't even handle such a simple thing. Chris continued his phone call and left the hospital. Seeing Chris leave through the hospital door, Emma stood there in a daze. Was Aiden sick? There were a lot of co-workers who tried to greet Emma, but she walked by them in a trance. After a long while, she returned to her senses and turned around and walked towards the reception. Hello, can you help me check to see if there's a patient called Aiden Grant in the hospital? Dr. Turner, please wait a moment. The staff at the counter knew Emma and immediately used the computer to help Emma check. Not long after, the staff at the counter found Aiden's room assignment. Dr. Turner, we have a patient named Aiden Grant staying in VIP room number 18 on the third floor. He was admitted at 5.30 yesterday afternoon. Emma's fingers tightened as she asked anxiously, What was the reason for admission? The clerk replied, He was admitted with a high fever and loss of consciousness. Oh, thank you. After Emma thanked him, she hurried to the third floor. When she arrived at the room, she could faintly hear the sound of coughing coming from inside. When Emma quietly pushed the door open and entered, Aiden was lying on the hospital bed with his back facing her. As he heard the door open, Aiden sat up somewhat impatiently. Chris, why are you still here? It's just a little fever. Don't worry and head back to the company. When he saw Emma, he stopped talking. Emma closed the door of the room and walked in. I saw Chris leaving the hospital. He should be on his way to the office by now. Aiden looked away and asked lightly, Chris sent you up? No, I happened to overhear him mention you were sick. Emma took an extra blanket from the cabinet and helped tuck it around him. She then turned the air conditioner in the room up by two degrees. Oh, Aiden said, but then didn't say anything else. Emma's tone was slightly embarrassed as she asked, Have they brought you lunch yet? Yes. Aiden picked up a document from the cabinet beside him and looked at it. Is your fever gone? 
Emma reached for Aiden's forehead naturally. Aiden looked at Emma in shock. He even dropped the documents in his hand. The latter also realized that her actions were too forward. She quickly withdrew her hand. Sorry, let me use your restroom really quick. After saying that, Emma hurriedly ran into the restroom. Emma leaned against the door and blushed when she entered the bathroom. Emma, what are you doing? You didn't need to touch his forehead for a temperature. That's what a thermometer is for. What's wrong with you? I'm a doctor. I was just checking. I am a doctor and I wanted to check on a sick person. After reasoning with herself, Emma turned on the faucet and used the cold water to splash on her face. She then stood quietly and waited for the water on her face to dry before walking back out. Aiden's eyes kept looking in the direction of the bathroom. There was still the soothing chill of Emma's hand on his forehead. Her body seemed to leach in the cold. She had been working hard all day, but her fingertips were still cold to the touch. He wondered if there was a heater in her office. Aiden thought about it and suddenly coughed. Emma heard the cough in the washroom and rushed out. Are you all right? Didn't you say it was just a fever? I'm fine. Can you get a glass of water? Aiden asked. Emma immediately poured a cup of water from the coffee table. She hurriedly passed it to Aiden. Aiden felt much better after drinking. You can lie down. Emma helped him lie back down. After sitting on the edge of the bed for a while, Emma said, That... I should go back to work. I'll let you rest. Aiden stared at Emma's face for a few seconds and said softly, Okay. Emma got up and walked out of the room. She closed the door behind her and left. Leaning against the wall in the corridor, Emma was annoyed with herself. Emma, didn't you say you wanted to dissolve your relationship with him? Then what are you doing here? When her phone rang in her pocket, she took the distraction. Yes, of course, I'll be right there. Mm hmm. Emma took the call and hurried back to her office. After work, Emma resisted the urge to visit Aiden. She hurried to the kindergarten to pick up Wendy and prepared to return to the villa. At this time, she received a call from Chris. Chris said that Aiden was still sick and hoped that Emma could bring Wendy by to visit him. Emma had the driver take her and Wendy back to the hospital. Mommy, do you have to work overtime today? Wendy asked curiously. No, Emma answered with the muscles on her face taut. Wendy asked again. Then why are we here? I'm taking you to see Uncle Aiden. Is Uncle Aiden sick? Yes, Emma said. Emma brought Wendy to Aiden's room. She stood there for a few seconds before she raised her hand and knocked on the door. The door was opened from the inside. Chris stood there waiting for them. Miss Turner, you're here. Wendy, quickly, go in. Emma let go of Wendy's hand. The latter nodded and ran into the ward. Uncle Aiden, I came to visit. Thank you, little one, for coming to see me. Aiden's face was filled with a pleasant surprise. Wendy climbed onto the bed and put her little face close to Aiden's. She asked, Uncle Aiden, did you take your medicine? Did they make you get any shots? Little one, you shouldn't get too close to uncle. It might spread to you. Aiden turned his head away. Unexpectedly, Wendy replied, When Wendy is sick, mommy says that if you share your germs, you get better quicker. Wendy will be fine. Wendy will get closer to Uncle Aiden and let Uncle Aiden's germs spread to me. Uncle Aiden can get better faster. These words express how pure and innocent Wendy's love for Aiden was. Aiden held back the sourness in his throat and held Wendy tightly in his arms. Emma, who was standing at the door of the room, had not expected Wendy to say such a thing. Tears rolled out of her eyes. She turned her head and wiped the tears away. Then she waved at Wendy. Little one, it's time for us to head home. Hearing Emma say that it was time to go, Wendy was reluctant. But mommy... Wendy, Emma said sternly. Wendy lowered her eyes and obediently climbed down from Aiden's bed. 
Aiden glanced at Emma, who was standing at the door of the room, and then softly soothed Wendy. Little one, you should head back with mommy first. When your uncle is better, maybe we can go play. Okay, Wendy said. Only then did Wendy say goodbye to Aiden, with tears in her eyes. After seeing Wendy leave unwillingly with Emma, Aiden's eyes instantly dimmed. He stared blankly at the door of the room for a long time before saying, Chris, tell me, what am I doing wrong? Am I just annoying? Chris sighed in his heart. If he had known earlier, he would not have called Ms. Turner. No. Aiden laughed at himself and then quietly laid down on the bed. Chris, go back to work. Come pick me up tomorrow. Emma's face was cold when she returned to the villa. Wendy did not dare to make her mommy angry anymore. She obediently ate, took a bath, and then went to bed. Emma looked at Wendy's cautious attitude and slowly said, Little one, why do you like Uncle Aiden? Because Uncle Aiden is kind to Wendy? Wendy replied with her little face lowered. Are others not good to Wendy? Godfather, Godmother, Grandma and Grandpa? Emma asked curiously. Wendy thought for a while and then said, Godfather and the others are good to me, but Uncle Aiden is different. Uncle Aiden is different because he is your daddy. Emma's throat felt sore. Little one, quickly go to sleep. When Uncle Aiden is better, you can play with him, okay? Yes. Good night, Mommy, she said. Children were so resilient. Although Emma had raised her voice at her daughter, as long as Emma soothed her, she would calm down immediately. Good night. Emma stroked Wendy's hair and looked out the window. She did not want Aiden to get involved in her life because she was so worried that he would shake her heart. She had worked so hard to get her life together. She had thought herself strong enough to handle anything now. But how could she stop the connection between Aiden and Wendy? How could she stop their attachment? She knew that what Wendy said to Aiden in the hospital had completely crushed the fight in her. The next day, Emma secretly went to Aiden's room and found it empty. Later, she asked the nurse, and knew that Aiden had been discharged early in the morning. After Emma learned about the situation from the nurse, she did not call Aiden to ask for anything more. She just left. She had been busy all week. On Friday, Emma went on leave, and Wendy went to the kindergarten. Emma stared around at the empty villa, feeling lonely to her core. She sat in the living room for a while, and finally returned to her room, she changed into a new set of clothes, took her bag, and went out the door. After she got the driver to take her into the city, she started wandering around aimlessly. The streets were the same, one after another. For some reason, she found herself at the intersection in front of SG Enterprises. She stared blankly at the entrance of SG Enterprises, then turned around and left. Aiden was sitting in Chris's car. As soon as he came back from the outside, he saw a familiar figure at the intersection. Why was she here? He saw Emma standing at the intersection, looking at the entrance of SG Enterprises for a while. Then she turned around and left. Aiden was silent for a few seconds and then he said, Chris, follow her. The car slowly followed Emma. Emma walked for several blocks and did not stop. It seemed like she was perhaps just going for a walk. Emma only stopped when she reached a small park opposite the city planning bureau. She quietly sat down on a bench in the park. She looked at the groups of people gathered in the park in a daze. She just watched until a young man suddenly ran over to her and snatched the purse from Emma's hand. Emma was in a daze. She had never seen it coming. When the bag was snatched, she got up and chased after him. How could she catch up to him? She could only watch helplessly as the other party ran into traffic with her bag in his hand. Emma stood on the roadside staring after him. There was not a lot of money in her bag, 
but there were many other important things. At this moment, Chris's car suddenly appeared at the intersection, then it entered the traffic flow and chased after the youth who had just robbed her. In a few minutes, they had caught up. The screech of an emergency brake rang out. Emma saw that the car had stopped in front of the young man and almost hit him. The young man was also terrified and had fallen back on his butt on the ground. This scene happened in the middle of a road with a lot of traffic. It was extremely dangerous. Even Emma was sweating for Chris. The young man got up and wanted to escape, but was swiftly kicked back to the ground by Chris, who had already gotten out of the car. The young man did not try to get up again for a long while. Chris picked up the bag from the ground and said to the young man, You've caught me on a good day. Today you'll only get a warning. Trust me, though. If I see you again, there will be consequences. The young man got up from the ground with all his hands and feet and staggered as he ran. Chris took the bag and handed it back to Emma. Emma, your bag. Emma took the bag and said with some worry, Actually, I don't have anything important in my bag. If I lose it, I lose it. It was very dangerous for you to do what you did. What if you'd hurt someone? Miss Turner, I just wanted to help, Chris replied. What were you doing here anyway? Emma raised her head and looked in the direction of Chris's car. Because it was too far away, she could not see clearly inside the car. But Emma assumed that Aiden was not in the car. If not, Chris would never have put his boss's safety at risk like that. She did not know that Aiden was watching her from the car, that he was the one who ordered Chris to handle it. If Emma were not watching, the young man would not have escaped so easily. Yes, I just left the city planning bureau and saw that person snatch your bag. Chris pointed at the planning bureau not far away. Oh. Emma did not know what to think. She felt disappointed, but she also felt lucky for his help. Sorry, I need to be heading back. I will head out first, Chris said. Okay. Emma looked away and nodded. Aiden's gaze was dark as he watched her through the rearview mirror. He watched her figure fade into the distance until she disappeared. Then he asked, What was she doing here? Ms. Turner said that she came out for a stroll. Chris truthfully conveyed Emma's words. He was thinking too much. She had just been out for a stroll. Aiden's eyes focused. Then he leaned against the back seat and closed his eyes. The car drove into traffic and disappeared into the distance. Emma called a taxi by the road and took a ride back to the villa. A familiar melody ran over the taxi stereo. I was thinking about you. I walked silently to the familiar street. I was constantly looking for you. I didn't have the courage to see you. The smooth voice in the car was surrounded by sadness. Emma closed her eyes, and her chest ached as she listened. She knew too well the feeling of wanting to find someone, but not wanting to get hurt again. A week had passed since Aiden came across Emma at the park. Today, Emma was at Neiman Marcus to pick up a few things after picking up Wendy from kindergarten. She happened to run into Aiden, who was in the store to discuss an upcoming advertising collaboration. Aiden was surrounded by many people in suits and ties. Everyone was friendly to him, but he was cold and arrogant. Mommy, Uncle Aiden is over there. Wendy called out, pointing at Aiden. Emma immediately stopped Wendy in a low voice. Keep your voice down. Uncle Aiden looks like he's busy. But Aiden had already seen them. He waved off the people milling around him and headed toward them. Uncle Aiden! Wendy climbed up onto his body with familiarity. Aiden smiled and hugged Wendy. Wendy's done with school for the day. Wendy wrapped her arms around Aiden's neck and replied, Yes, Mommy just picked me up. That's good. Aiden pushed aside Wendy's messy hair, then raised his head and looked towards Emma. I came here to buy some things. Emma raised the bag in her hand. Yes, I just had a meeting with the owner of Neiman Marcus. 
Aiden's gaze shifted from Emma's bag to Emma's face. Have you finished here? Yes. Aiden paused for a moment and then asked, Are you planning to take off right away? Before Emma could answer, Wendy interrupted, Uncle Aiden, come with us to get dinner. How could Aiden reject Wendy's invitation? Of course he had never thought of rejecting it. The corner of Aiden's mouth curved up slightly. His bright eyes stared at Emma. Is it all right if I join? Emma's ears turned red in the face of Aiden's gaze. She softly nodded in acknowledgement. When Emma and the others walked into the Tao downtown restaurant, the waiter immediately brought them to a table. Aiden picked up a menu from the table and handed it to Emma. Then he tilted his head and asked Wendy, What does Wendy want? We always get the Peking duck, Wendy said, shaking her little head. Aiden nodded and looked at Emma. I think we'll add some spring rolls. Emma closed the menu. When the waiter came over, Aiden ordered two of the double servings of duck, their rolls, and a cup of tea for Emma, and some juice for Wendy. Emma raised her head in shock when she heard Aiden order her tea. She happened to fall into Aiden's dark eyes. He still remembered her favorite drink after all this time. Emma's fingers dug into her palm tightly. When Aiden said hot tea, the waiter was momentarily stunned. Running to a fine restaurant and ordering tea instead of something off the wine list was a bit off. However, the waiter in the western restaurant of Hilton was used to strange requests. After a few seconds of silence, he nodded. Okay, I'll have that right out. Soon their dishes were served. Aiden quietly cut the duck for Wendy and then started to cut his own. Emma watched silently as she picked at the spring rolls and served herself. After finishing the meal, Aiden asked Wendy with a smile, Little one, did you like your dinner? Wendy replied with slight disdain, I like mommy's cooking better. Aiden looked up at Emma and said, Your mommy really is a very good cook. Emma instantly remembered the time she'd cooked for Aiden. He'd always eaten everything she put in front of him. Her face immediately turned red. Has Uncle Aiden also eaten Mommy's cooking? Wendy asked naively. Yes. Of course he had. Those were some of the most beautiful memories he had. Aiden reminisced silently. Mommy's breakfast is even better. She makes really good waffles and omelets. Wendy began listing her favorite dishes. Aiden quietly listened. He looked at Emma and softly said, I don't know when I'll ever try those again. Emma's body trembled when she heard Aiden's words. She then lowered her head. Uncle Aiden can come to our house. Mommy will cook for Uncle Aiden too. Wendy happily invited Aiden. I will go when I have the chance. But Aiden knew that he was just being polite with Wendy. How could he go walk into the home she shared with Gus? Emma paused with her fork in midair but she did not say anything. Wendy was incomparably happy. You have to come, okay? Yes. Aiden's eyes darkened. After exiting the Western restaurant, Aiden watched Emma and Wendy get into a waiting car. Then he got into Chris's car and left. The next day, when Emma was making waffles for Wendy, she specially made an extra serving. Before she got into the car, she put them in a to-go container. After dropping Wendy off at the kindergarten, Emma instructed the driver to send her to SG Enterprises. When they were almost at the entrance, Emma called Chris. Chris, did he eat breakfast yet? Not yet. Chris looked at the breakfast he'd laid out on the coffee table and answered. I brought him breakfast. Can you come down and grab it? Emma asked carefully. Breakfast for Mr. Grant? Chris looked at Aiden. Aiden stopped dressing and turned around. Okay, I'll be right down, Miss Turner. Chris nodded and hung up the phone. He said to Aiden, Ms. Turner seems to have brought you breakfast. I will run down and grab it. Aiden did not reply, but Chris knew that Mr. Grant wanted it. He stowed away the breakfast on the coffee table before he went. What a joke! 
If Emma had made breakfast, Mr. Grant was never going to eat what he served. When he went downstairs, Emma was standing at the door waiting. Because the weather was a little chilly, her cheeks were red and she was shivering. Seeing Chris come out, Emma quickly passed the dish and her arms off to him. She gasped, It's still warm, so take it straight up to him. Miss Turner, aren't you going to stay for a while? Chris asked. Emma's expression stiffened. No, I should go. I have my first surgery at 8.30. After saying that, Emma hurriedly headed back across the road and got into the car to leave. After Chris saw Emma's car off, he carried breakfast upstairs. Mr. Grant, I need to get to work. Here's the food she brought. Chris put down the dish and left the office. Aiden, who was standing in front of the window, turned around and walked to the coffee table. He opened the container and found that it was filled with waffles, made by Emma herself. They were soaked with syrup and bourbon whipped cream, he remembered. She'd left out blueberries because he hated them. Ever since she left, he usually skipped breakfast. Every day Chris brought it in, he would usually toss it into the rubbish bin. He really didn't expect her to bring him food after what he had said so casually last night. She had brought him breakfast this morning. He took out a fork and slowly cut into the waffles. He put them in his mouth and took a bite. It was familiar, a warmth that he had not tasted for many years.